Hello, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to discuss how to do a newsletter in Microsoft Word that covers the basics. Let me show you the finished version first, and then we'll start with the raw version and build up to it. So in my folder, I've just got a Word document that's got a finished version in here. And it's not really a newsletter per se. We just use it as an example piece because you could change all the words and make it a newsletter. We have the nameplate up here that you would design for your newsletter a mixture of text and graphics or whatever you'd like to make. Obviously the font size needs to be rather large and we tend to like to use a sans serif style font here and that's our choice here is Arial. When we get into the body of the newsletter we're using Times New Roman. Now a couple things to point out here. Within the nameplate we've just got one single column obviously and after the graphical line gets placed in here that goes across we do a section break in here so that we can then go to two columns which is what most newsletters are. There will be a two column document. And so we have certain things bolded. We change the font, like I said, back to um, Times New Roman. We get all the text in here. And we also wait till all the text is in. Then we tend to put the drop the images in, you know, using insert. And this particular image is a GIF or GIF image. And it allows us with Word, with wrap text, to wrap that text around this side of the image and then obviously we're very straight on the other side of the image just to give it some um, design flair there and as we go through we also have what we call a pull quote over here and um, with a pull quote you see this a lot of times in magazine articles they'll pull a certain section of important text from the article and display it in a very bold fashion and here we've just used a text box and we've wrapped the other text around it we've given this text box a certain background color and made the uh, font maybe a little bigger or we've bolded it or changed the font to make it stand out more so um, it's just something to think about and that's called a pull quote in desktop publishing terms okay so what we're going to do is just walk through this one and kind of recreate what we see here and uh, realize you can substitute and put your own words in there to make your own newsletter with this so let me go over to the example where we just have all the text thrown in there but um, nothing is formatted yet okay so let me go back to that folder and that's the one you just saw that was complete but we have the unfinished one here let me bring that one up now with obviously this one's the same document really but just no formatting okay so we'll walk through it uh, we want to check the margins first they may already be set but let me just go to page layout go to margins and let's see what they are I'll go to custom margins um, they have 0.5 for top bottom left and right and that's all good it is portrait obviously and we'll just say OK to start with and then um, obviously you're going to be you can type it um, with what you want there but chapter one actually uh, looking at the finished one is centered and it's a lot bigger so we'll go to home tab and center it and we'll make it the right font which they specify on here that it should be Arial 36 point bold so I'll keep it highlighted and I'll change it to Arial 36 point for the size and bold and the subtitle is early, early theories of matter which again should be centered it's Arial also but it's 20 point and bold 20 point and bold okay after that we have um, a graphical line that we're going to put in there and this would in publishing desktop publishing terms that would be called a horizontal rule so we will place that by going to insert shape and just go down to lines just a basic line but and you want to start at the very edge of the document where you actually get the uh, plus sign or crosshairs if you have trouble keeping things straight with your mouse just hold shift down while you draw it and it should keep it pretty straight then you can adjust up or down just using your arrows so I'll draw it from edge to edge because I'll let the printer decide where it's going to cut it off at now it's not thick enough which is called weight so we'll go up to um, format click on drawing tools format shape outline is your choice there if you wanted a different color this is the time to pick it whether it be one of these colors or 
standard colors or more outline colors. Um, I'm okay with black for this one, but I'm going to go down to weight. And for Word, I typically like my um, lines to be three point. And I probably want it down just a little bit further so it's still activated. So I can use my arrow keys. That's kind of the easy way. Sometimes with your mouse it gets a little tricky to pull it down. And that gives us good spacing because good white space is important too. Now, um, after this graphical line, we're going to put in a section break. And because the rest of this um, article is going to be uh, two columns and not just one. So to make that happen, let me get down here. And to get to section break, you want to go to page layout. And then you'll see breaks just to your right. And click on breaks because there's lots of different kinds of breaks. And even within section breaks, we have several choices. And the one we want today is continuous. So that means insert a section break and start the new section on the same page. Okay, so that lets it know something's going to be happening soon. And at this point, we want to set for two columns. So for um, in the same area, I believe we have under page layout, we have columns. We can pick how many columns we want. And for newsletters, I think two is the most reasonable choice. As soon as you click it, you can see how it adjusts itself there. And um, so that works rather well. And um, at this point, you know, you want to. We, everything else in this article is um, Times New Roman, which is fine. Um, but some of the column headings, I guess we could call them, um, 17th century view of matter, if you can see that. We need to bring that up to Arial 12 point and bold to make it stand out a bit more. So we'll make that um, Arial 12 point bold. Okay. And I might want to also drop that down just a bit the page. You want, you want a reasonable amount of white space. White space draws attention to everything else that you've left on the page. White space is just an area where there is no image, there are no images, there is no text. And also I, I didn't show it on the other one, the finished one, but you can you know put drop caps along the way. And a drop cap is a pretty cool nice tool. Um, you can just you know highlight the first letter. And you've seen these before in magazine articles and newspaper articles. And if I go to, I believe it's um, insert, yeah, the insert tab, and highlight your first letter, uh, drop cap is one of your choices in the text ribbon, and you can get a drop cap. And you have several choices. You can see it as it, as you drop, uh, take your mouse over it, dropped, like it gives me the big B and by. Um, that's within the margin, or you can have it stand outside your margin, like that. So um, your choice, which way you want to do it. Now, do you have to live with that particular font size that's so big? No, you can go into drop cap options and change it to whatever you need to change it to. Um, again, those same two choices are there, but if you want to change it to a different font style, uh, how many lines do you want it to drop down? Maybe three is too much. Maybe you want just two lines to drop down. Uh, maybe you want a little more distance between your text, uh, maybe a point two. Okay, um, you have several different options there. If you don't like that, go back and um, try in margin. Don't like that as much. Probably do that, but then go back to my earlier settings. And that was three, wasn't it? Okay. And so that you can see how drop cap works. If you prefer that without the um, margin indentation, like the indent, you could probably go back on that. Let me just redo that. Just let you see it in all the different ways. And we'll just get rid of the, do it there. Insert it there, dropped. Yeah, kind of like it like that. If you want to do that, that's up to you and your own design preferences, I guess. So that's a drop cap if you want to install that along the way. And then um, obviously we have some more areas we could change to Arial. Arial's, like I said, Arial's a sans serif font that's good for titles and subtitles. Um, sans serif just means it's without those little wings on each letter. Very contempor more contemporary style, more a cleaner line font. That works good for that. Let me make that bold. Okay. As you can see, I'm probably only going to operate on this first page. Um, obviously, you can take that down a little further if I want to. 
but I've got an image to put in. So let's work with the image that I've got ready for this one. Um, insert picture. Obviously, I have an image that'll work for this particular document. So let me drive back to where I have that image stored. And let's put Galileo in there. Now, initially it comes in, it just treats itself like text and it plops itself wherever your cursor probably was. So I have to let it know that I want it to um, wrap text appropriately. So, um, you know, I have, and I can resize it, it'll let me do that, but it's still going to keep it within there and it's not going to let me have any text out to the sides. So I've got to change that to make that more cooperative, let's just say. So when I click on the graphic, picture tools and format come up. Wrap text is what's going to help me fix this. So wrap text, and you have lots of choices in the publishing world on this, So, but um, square or tight work pretty good. Um, square is not is going to square everything off. Tight's going to let you actually have some uh, design technique where the text kind of rolls along the uh, border on that. Now, I don't want it there. It's okay there, but I think it w would look even cooler if I had it like there, so kind of in between the columns. So as you push it over, notice how the text wraps around the left side, but yet because I have a border here, it kind of makes it very straight around this side. So it gives some added dimension to the newsletter. So we have that, and that works pretty well, and uh, I hope that uh, helps. We still have to do the pull quote. We're going to do that over here. Um, pull quote, anytime you want to take a section of text, which you know you want to leave that text in here obviously so it makes sense for the article and uh, let me stop right there, that's the part I want. So you're just going to make a copy of this that you want to in bring out and impact so I'm going to copy that text. Now I'm going to insert a text box to make my pull quote and a simple one will do um, no, whoops, I don't need to do that. I'll just go with the one here. I can always move it around. I can do so much with a text box. Make the shape different. Obviously, it's got some text in there that I don't want, but I'll zap in just a minute. And let me just go in there and um, delete that and add what I do want. Got to format it though. Um, Got to do a little bit of. Uh, wrapping the text around there because I don't want the article to go behind the pull quote here so several things I want to do, I want to format the um, text box itself uh, I want to make the colors and lines, let's see, black's fine the weight though I need to change, again I like it like a three point weight for the border for that text box Okay, I want the background to be um, so I'll just click on the border again and say uh, go back to format text box and I also want to uh, affect the background in there fill color let's go there I even have fill effects so I could get quite fancy with that if I wanted to uh, just let me pick a soft gray okay that makes it stand out a bit of course I'm working in a black and white world here now I need to format this so with it activated, it will let me click on format. And there is some wrap text I need to do here. So um, I need to just have the square. When I say square, that's going to wrap the text around this text box and not let it go behind the text box. Obviously, I need to make this a little stand out, more stand out uh, than it is right now. So I can bold it. I can make it just a little bit bigger font size if I wanted to and then drag it down so it all will display. That's too much. Okay, get in there. Okay. And you typically like to line it up with the the border, or the margin, I should say, the margin on the right side. Okay. That just seems to have a bit better visual effect. Okay. I hope that helps with your um, pursuit of a good newsletter format. Thank you for your time.